All right. What are we gonna react to today? What are they saying in the comments? Let's let's check this out. Let's check. This you out. Uncle Roger, Roger video with Jamie, Jamie Olive, Olive Oil. Oil. You, know you know what, what to do, do Brian. Brian. Winky Brian. face. Heart. Bro, Bro, you need to react to the latest Uncle Roger, Roger with Jamie Olive, Olive Oil. Please, Please. <laughs> react to Uncle Roger's most recent video on Jamie's Tyrant Curry. I just want her. Imagine you should react to Roger's first Hello, niece and nephew. It's Uncle Roger. Okay, Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef, and today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger, forced to review the worst Thai red curry. Shout out to Yen and Adam Gorak, thank you so much for becoming sous chef level patrons. If you have been enjoying this content and want to support me further, please consider becoming a patron, link in the description below. If you're new to the channel, I am a professional chef with 18 years of experience. I've defeated Bobby Flay on the Food Network show, Beat Bobby Flay, as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of Beauty in Essex located right here in New York City. The opinions and views expressed in this video are exactly that. They're just my views and opinions based on my years working as a culinary professional, but I don't always get it right. So please let me know in the comments below if you have something to add or a correction to make because I love to learn. Plus, I'd love to hear from you. Last but not least, I do want to thank everybody so much for your support, for all the views and subscriptions. It is because of you guys I fulfilled truly a bucket list thing, which was to appear on NPR News. They did a piece on Uncle Roger, and they sought me out to get my opinions and to do a few minutes with me over the phone. And it was just, it was mind blowing to hear my voice on NPR. What an honor. I, I am such a huge NPR fan, and it would not have happened without you guys. So again, uh, I am overwhelmed, overjoyed, and I just wanted to take a second to say thank you. Thank you very much. It really, really means a lot to me to have your support. Thank you, all right? And with that sappy shit out of the way, let's react to some shit. Uh, who are you? Why are I tied up like this? Uh, Uncle Roger, I've been sent by Auntie Helen. She's not happy that you've been mentioning it. Auntie Helen? She ain't doing laundry right now. Yeah, she probably called that shit on Uncle Roger. And all your Ouija's. Auntie Helen? My ex-wife Auntie Helen? You tell her I'm not scared of her. Oh really? She knew you were gonna say that. So we have something special planned for you, Uncle Roger. What? You have to review Jamie Oliver's Thai red curry. No, 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 no. Please, please, no. Tell her I'd do anything she wants. <laughs> And here we are, about to watch more Jamie Oliver disappointment. So I'm gonna make the most beautiful Thai red curry with- Wait, Didn't he say red curry? I swore, I could have sworn that was a yellow curry. <laughs> so, I don't know what the fuck is going on. That's not red curry. Why, why does it say, whatever, let's keep watching. So I'm gonna make the most beautiful Thai red curry with prawns and lemongrass in all the supermarkets. Just trim off the ends like that. Uh, lemongrass correct? Come on, review it properly. <laughs> it's Jamie Oliver. He must have made some mistake. He cut the wrong end, he cut the wrong end. You need to cut the hot end Why you cut the soft end. Hiya, Jamie, see? Nephew kidnapper. Uh, that, that wasn't... So the end that he cut it was the part closer to the top. Most of that is unusable. It's more of the root end, and then you take out some of the super fibrous uh, layers. I'm surprised he didn't slap it on the table this time. But uh, I don't. I, I guess Uncle Roger's under stress right now, and he's just not making the right observation. Who knows? Give it a spank. But if you smell it, it's... he he had to give it a spank. Also released that incredible. Why he likes spanking things? Sherbet <laughs> lemon sort of <laughs> smell, flavour. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. So I've got the lemon. Hi, uh, food processor. Use pestle and mortar. I mentioned in the last Jamie Oliver curry disaster how I can understand a food processor. And you know what? For your regular home cook, it's going to be a lot easier to have a food processor. But then again, a lot of regular home cooks probably don't have a food processor. Most of them don't really have a need for it and they're not exactly cheap. Or I guess you can get them pretty cheap at like Walmart or Target. Regardless, the most authentic way is obviously 
mortar and pestle, right? That's just how they did it in the old world. Someone in the comments mentioned a really good idea, which is to start it in the food processor and then you can finish with mortar and pestle. Uh, also, a lot of people mentioned that, it, you know, the mortar and pestle just gives you a, a different end product. And I would agree with that for sure. And it obviously will give you a more authentic end product. But there is definitely going to be a textural difference when something is smashed versus being chopped up. 100%, I agree with that. Although, again, I'm a Western trained chef. If I was asked to make hundreds of portions of this a week, I would go the route of making my paste in a food processor. Just pure honesty, you know, again, from a Western trained chef. I'm gonna put a heaped teaspoon of tomato what? puree. What? Then... Tom tomato puree for... What is this? I uh, know, but they use tomato for Thai red curry. That's the wrong thing. Okay, uh, I, I may get lit on fire for this, but are tomatoes even indigenous to uh, the Thai region? Like seriously, I, I'm being for real right now. If, if I'm really thinking about it, with my limited knowledge of Thai cuisine in general, I, you know, I, I'm sure it's been imported forever, right? For ages, but is it actually indigenous? I just, and especially tomato puree. Uh, I highly, highly doubt that. What the fuck is this guy thinking? Cut off my rope. Uncle Roger wanted to put my leg down from chair. <laughs> this must be fastest Uncle Roger ever put leg down from chair. He really is Usain Bolt of fucking up. <laughs> oh, nobody used tomato puree for red curry. What is this? You're trying to make bolognese, is it? <laughs> then, I'm going to put four of these roasted peeled peppers. Pepper? Really kind of smoky, sweet flavour. Four of these go in. Wrong again. Tomato puree and red pepper. I think Jamie going, oh, I'm making red curry today. Get all the okay. red thing oh, in. Yeah, he's literally just grabbing red everything. Thinking or trying to make a Thai red curry paste. Oh, I, I, I am 100% in agreement with Uncle Roger, I cannot believe how fast Jamie fucks these things up. It's just mind-boggling. Good thing he's not working next to fire extinguisher. <laughs> he's gonna put that into... Got this bunch of coriander. Cori... So, about... so much? Nice big handful, stalks... You want coriander root, not coriander. Oh yeah, that was another thing you guys told me about. Again, I'm a Western trained chef. I have very limited knowledge in uh, Thai cookery specifically. I've grown up with a lot of Chinese cookery, Korean cookery, uh, you know, some Japanese cookery, not more, more than some. I, I ran a Japanese place for quite some time. But um, yeah, someone pointed out to me that uh, it wouldn't be coriander or cilantro. It would actually be the coriander root. And uh, that, again, something new for me. And uh, uh, clearly he's just throwing in this giant bunch of cilantro. If you look at those ingredients by themselves and you mix them together, made some kind of paste or sauce out of it, listen, 100% honesty, it's not gonna taste bad. Those ingredients all individually taste great, and if you put them together, they're going to taste great too. That's my opinion on it. But you're saying you're making Thai red curry, and this is just not the way to go about it. Clearly. Chili and then garlic. What? Chili, I'll use this one chili. One chili. <laughs> one, remember niece and nephew. Jamie Oliver making his green curry. He used three chili, and we all know that is not enough. Oh, fuck. One chili. Why even bother red curry like this one portion? We use 10 red chili. There you go. So, I mean, you know, one of the main components of red curry paste for Thai red curry is going to be lots of red chilies. I guess you could say he's making this for a Western audience and maybe he's replacing all that fresh spicy red chili with those roasted chilies. Number one, I don't think he should have used roasted chilies. If he really wanted to down the spice level, I would have said, you know, then go for the bell peppers but even then you know again you're saying that this is thai red curry this is your definitive video on thai red curry no it's just one chili use the right amount mm -hmm. not the white amount <laughs> and then garlic Two <laughs> Oh, 
and just Ay, yeah, garlic crusher for what? You're gonna blend it all in food processor anyway. Garlic crusher is the whitest invention. <laughs> Uncle Roger only see white people use it before. <sighs> Nephew kidnapper, you white. Do you have any garlic crusher at home? Uh, yeah. See what I tell you? Why so white? I would agree with that 100%. Uh, if you're putting everything in a food processor, I would um, chop it up a little bit because yes, a food processor is great, but the longer you keep product in a food processor, the more it's gonna beat it up. Remember, this is a high powered motor that is literally chopping your shit the fuck up, right? If you assist it by giving it a few chops or for in the garlic's case, just maybe crushing it once. You don't necessarily need to start mincing it, but you just crush it again. You're just assisting it. He put cilantro in there. I, If I was doing this, I would have chopped it once or twice. Again, assisting it. The the um lemongrass though i definitely would have cut it into smaller pieces similar to what jamie did put in there because it can be very fibrous you know lemongrass fibers don't really look very pretty in your final product it almost looks like hair i mentioned this in the other jamie oliver thai curry disaster video yeah I, I don't know why he felt the need to crush it in there maybe that was a brand he was trying to rep for this for this video who knows so why and he can't even squash. <laughs> ginger. Two. No, wrong. Kalangkal, mm, kalangkal. Ginger. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this again in many previous videos. That Uncle Roger reacts to Gordon making fried rice. He used galangal. But also in Jamie's other video, we keep referring back to that. Uh, he used ginger again. And I always describe ginger as being sharp and pungent. Whereas I would descri describe Galangal, though it looks very similar to ginger, it is very different flavor profile wise, completely different. It's uh, a bit earthy, it's a bit more floral, it has a bit more of a citrus aroma, uh, not a bit, but like uh, uh, just a slight rounding of earthy and uh, citrus aroma. It's really interesting and uh, you can you can order it pretty easily online these days actually. It's uh, not as difficult to find as you may think. I don't cook with it often, but um, yeah, like I said, you can probably find it online in most places these days. And then I got a secret ingredient, okay? Lime. Okay, what the fuck? Listen, did you see him just chuck that baseball size ginger in there? And all the meanwhile, <laughs> He crushed the garlic in the thing. Like, this is just not making sense. Jamie's clearly a lot younger here. Uh, not that that has anything to do with it, but yeah, what, what, this is, it's not making sense. It, it's very inconsistent as far as his technique goes. And, and all of his videos feel like it. He's just shooting from the hip. He's just kind of figuring it out as he goes along. And in my personal and professional, actually, no, in my professional opinion, I think that is what so many people shit on him for because Jamie's doing all these dishes, uh, you know, these big famous dishes. And I just don't think he does the research because I'll tell you what, I just finished filming an egg fried rice video. I grew up um, eating egg fried rice, watching it being made and eventually making it on my own. So that was a video that I was very confident and comfortable with making. And I, um, you know, you guys want keep mentioning you want to see more cooking videos from me. And clearly, my channel was built on the back of Uncle Roger. Thank you, Uncle Roger. Thank you, Nigel Ung. You're, you're awesome. Uh, thank you for putting out this content. But uh, people seem to be interested in watching me make these dishes that I, you know, comment on and react to. And I wasn't going to do a Thai green curry. But I decided that I am going to, not right away. I, I'm really busy with the new sandwich shop opening. You know, check out Mission Sandwich on Instagram. But you know what I decided is, uh, if if I'm if I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is, you know, I'm sure that if I do a little bit of research and you know do do one or two practice goes, I'm pretty sure I can get a half decent product. And it won't take me long, you know? Granted, I am a professional, I, you know, I've worked in kitchens, I'm very comfortable in kitchens, but I honestly feel like if I can take half an hour to an hour researching the ingredient sets, the techniques, I mean, there's no shortage of information out there, then really anyone else should be able to do it. All right, so that video is coming up, but let's keep watching. Let's get back to the original intent of this video, watching Jamie Oliver, Jamie Oliver, 
destroy Asian cuisine. Leaves. Incredible. So put about Wait, four what? or five leaves. Not lime leaf. You want lime says secret ingredient. If by secret you mean wrong, then you correct. Okay. Four or five Kefir. leaves of kaffir lime in there. Kaffir lime leaf. All right. I mean, that I'm actually not 100% sure on. Kaffir lime leaf is indigenous to the Southeast Asian region. However, doesn't mean you just throw in... <laughs> Doesn't mean you just throw in every Asian ingredient. Like J.B. Oliver's fried rice, just fucking throwing in Asian ingredients. And this is going to make an awesome egg fried rice. This is going to make... Let's keep watching. Kefir lime leaf, by the way, is freaking delicious. Highly recommend you try it out. Oh, it looks so bad. Those beautiful Gross. in there. We want to... Um, Work up beautiful. So um, about two tablespoons no. of olive oil goes in. Give <laughs> me olive oil. And no. I'm gonna season with soy sauce. So, so, what? One to two tablespoons should do the trick. But he really just takes a bunch of Asian ingredients and throws it in there. You know. Listen, my father's Taiwanese, my mom's Korean. If you want to simplify it, you know, uh, and. You just can't throw Asian stuff together expecting to make authentic Asian cuisine. That's that's just not how it works, Jamie. So, soy sauce? It's, and he's using Japanese kikoman. <laughs> For your pirate curry paste, who do that higher? Yeah. This is Jamie Olive Oil, mm. worst video yet. Nobody mm. put soy sauce in tyrant curry. Hiya. <laughs> okay, okay, Uncle Roger, I'm gonna stop this. This video is giving you a heart attack, and I don't want to be a murderer. Don't you dare, don't you dare, nephew kidnapper. We in too deep now. <laughs> All our ancestors crying. Uncle Roger need to avenge them. Press play. Press play. Two tablespoons of olive oil goes in. And and the olive oil again. Jamie olive oil. Just never stop with the olive oil, do you? And I'm gonna season with soy sauce. What the hell is this red curry paste? Where your dry spices? Where your white peppercorn? Mm -hmm. Where your salt? Mm. Salt you <laughs> yeah. don't have? And where your... Just... Just use some basic ass salt, bro. <laughs> Shrimp paste, hiya. Mm -hmm. Shrimp paste, one of the most important ingredients in red curry paste. And in green curry paste. I mean, in curry paste in general, the shrimp paste is really integral, really key. And you know, that that's looking more like a like like a chimichurri or something like that. Again, I, I, I mentioned that all these ingredients in here, you know, even the soy sauce, yeah, it, it, it can work for in this case, if I was making some type of fucked up chimichurri, you know, I wouldn't use salt, I, I, I wouldn't use soy sauce, I just go for regular salt. But this is this is just it's not Thai red curry paste at all, not even close later and a little bit of fish sauce basically a teaspoon of fish sauce fish okay uh oh, fuck he's got sesame oil there at least it's not vegetarian fish sauce this time thank goodness but he's he's putting sesame oil in there it, it again it's just another scenario of like going to the grocery store buying every Asian thing and throwing it in there that's just not I keep saying this this is not how it works that's correct but don't put in blender fish sauce you put in when cooking yeah. but credit to Jamie he using Tiparo's fish sauce that's super authentic one point to Jamie <laughs> so now he at negative 9999 points it's basically a teaspoon of fish sauce and a teaspoon of sesame oil. Sesame oil wrong. Yeah, uh, that's another thing uh, Uncle Roger pointed out and reminded me. The, soy, the, the fish sauce doesn't go into the paste, all right? The paste is its own thing. It's Yes, it is a multitude of ingredients. And in this, this one thing I do know, there are places in Thailand where they just specialize in these curry pastes. Like, they're the best in the area, the town, the province, whatever it is. And all they do is make these curry pastes because it's complicated and it's a lot of labor and not everyone wants to do the pestle and mortar. I, I don't know what the point I'm making is. I'm, I'm just trying to find something redeeming to talk about in this video. <laughs> oh, it looks at that. 
So ugly, so clumpy. Bang that on there so we can get all of that out there. Ugh. In a hot pan. McQueen mutter in law gets smoother paste in just four pounds. It's like a food processor, not even trying. Hi. Jamie, oh. that, look at that color. It's mustard yellow. <laughs> It's like looks like spicy brown mustard right now. Well, cooking so bad, even his food processor give up on him. <laughs> What's so interesting that I'm learning as I'm watching this? I really love that um, Uncle Roger's video cut to a uh, some B-roll of a old Thai grandma or auntie making authentic paste. And did you see how smooth that was? She did it in the pestle and mortar. That is a curry paste. Okay, you know, now that I'm seeing this visually, again, I'm learning along with you guys in this scenario. You can't achieve that in a uh, in a food processor. And now I do take it back. Now that I'm, again, more educated on this, <laughs> reacting and learning from you guys, that is a texture you cannot replicate in a food processor. You know, yeah, sure, you can kind of get it started, but now let's look at Jamie Oliver's product. In order for the food processor to work, the product has to be able to move, right? And how's it gonna move? It needs some form of lubrication and Jamie Olive Oil just chooses to keep putting olive oil. So this is almost turning into sauce territory, right? And again, the food processor, the food processor is not gonna do its job without enough moisture or lubricant to keep the product moving. Whereas with that paste that you saw, again, you're pounding and you're essentially breaking, right? So rather than cutting, you're breaking these pieces. And that is, now I can really see the distinguishing, like why a pestle and mortar is so important. Very interesting, very cool. And I'm gonna go a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil again. Yeah. Wrong again. Paste in here first. <laughs> All of it. Off it? Jamie, don't use off it. Save some paste for your pasta tomorrow. <laughs> then I'm gonna go in with the prawn. No. No. Frozen prawns, they're perfect. Chuck them in frozen now, no worries at all. Give them a little shake like that. No, the prawn. You don't mm. just saute prawn like that. You're not making stir fry. Prawn is expensive ingredient and you ruin it like this. <laughs> prawn in red curry. You just cook in red curry itself. Like how you cook chicken in Thai green curry. No need to stir fry it first. All right. In fairness to Jamie, yes, you do, typically with curries, you do just throw in the protein after you kind of get your sauce started, right? After, you know, so you're basically cooking it, you're like poaching it in the liquid. Whereas in Western cuisine, it's very common to sear your protein first, you know, before you get everything together. So there's a big difference there culturally from a cooking technique perspective. However, what Jamie did there was not, I would say not too far off. Like he didn't sear the shrimp on the pan. Granted, he is sauteing it, so he is kind of beating it up pretty hard. Also, Jamie didn't put in his coconut milk first. I mentioned in the um, green, in Jamie's green Thai curry butcher video uh, that you, you know, you're supposed to be putting in this much. I do know you're supposed to be putting in the coconut oil first and then break it. And when I say break it again, that means the fat is separating from the milk solids and then it gives it a very shiny and oily um, look to it, which is actually an undesired trait in Western cookery, but is very much the desired trait for authentic Thai cooking of curries. Give them a little shake like that. I'm also going to get sugar snap peas. Shook. Straight no. sugar snaps. No, 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 no. Uh, he's at, uh... <laughs> uh, okay. Collect myself. Um, I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. Jamie Oliver's fucking this up bad. Uh, yeah, he is He is clearly just sautéing it, and he's putting in the coconut milk. Now they cut to Uncle Roger, but if you saw, you saw some uh, coconut milk going in there. Just again, ass backwards, man. Way ass backwards. <laughs> Munch to again, 200 gram of that worst vegetable. <laughs> This guy just loves Scary. Munch 2. Is he sponsored by Big Munch 2 or something? <laughs> Every curry, he put that in there and 200. And uh, I, I said, I, I think I said 
sugar sn- no no i think i said snow pe- that was snow peas in the last episode in the green curry one Th- these are sugar snap peas they're a little different i love sugar snap peas i think they're delicious they're not exactly an authentic ingredient for thai red curry i know that much but yeah he was he's really into his manch too as they would call it in in on the other side of the pond gram of this shit <laughs> versus one chili yes oh my oh my yes it, very true what 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 is going on jamie what is going on man what what the hell are you doing <laughs> oh man auntie helen is brutal yeah she the most evil bitch <laughs> she make putin feel like mother Teresa. and then coconut milk so literally i'm going to bring this to the boil and turn it right down to a simmer and this will be ready in three minutes a little bit of coriander more coriander i thought you chop up the whole forest minute. already <laughs> And a little bit of lime juice. Lime juice wrong. So I'm just going to pour that. Oh. Okay. That looks like puke. This Thai red curry, no Thai, no red, (laughs) and not curry. Look at this shit. Absolutely gorgeous. More. No, no more. (laughs) And he's doing Chinese too. (laughs) No. No! This is not Thai red curry. This British orange soup. Yeah, yes! Oh, man. Exactly. It's not red at all. It, 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 it. I am fucking speechless right now. <laughs> oh. It's not red. The seps were ass backwards. He, again, he's putting the coconut milk at the end. Finding out some of these... Ta- like... A lot of these techniques, other than making the the curry paste, they're not hard. You can research this shit. There are so many videos on how to make authentic Thai red curry on YouTube. Granted, maybe when this video came out, you know, there was no YouTube and stuff like that. But still, like, it it just drives me nuts when people are taking these classic dishes doesn't have to be asian okay any classic dish and just completely butcher it when all they needed to do was just do a tiny bit more research and then you could have at least gotten close and then claim that you're doing your version of it but yeah man uncle roger thousand percent correct it's not thai it's not red and it's not even curry I really had to stop and think for a second because I was definitely dunking on Jamie quite a bit. And it's it's all it's fun. You know, it's fun to do these reactions. Uh, You guys clearly enjoy it. They're absolutely hilarious. But, you know, it's hilarious because this authentic, wonderful food is being completely shit on by someone who's not taking the time to respect it. And rather than say, hey, I don't know enough about this, so I'm not gonna do it, or you know, let's hold off and let's get it right, it's just like vomiting out content, right? And dude, you deserve get to get dunked on. <laughs> That's all I can say. Sorry, I didn't mean, I was trying to get deep about it, but man, you deserve to get shit on. Bad. All right, all right, enough. What am I going to score this? One out of 10. It's going to be a negative 2 billion, 200 million, 220, 200,000. Oh, I can't even count right now. It's bad. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did watching it. Um, this, this one jumbled my brain pretty bad pretty bad until next time guys i am chef brian sow not your typical chef and i'll see you really soon